So, um, hmm. You ever have your own personal taste? You ever have a taste of, you know, who you find attractive to? My personal taste, I like big breasts. I like them big, beautiful titties. Uh, and a shapely ass. I, you know, I, I'm going through my thing about what I like. It doesn't have to be big. It doesn't have to be super juicy. It just has to be shapely. So if that comes with it being big and juicy, then that's fucking fine. And that's just like physical shit. Like we all have physical characteristics that we actually like. Um, our good friend in the chat with Jita, he has his characteristics that he likes. I've seen the pictures and yeah, yeah. Wonderful. I personally like, uh, I don't want to fucking shame somebody for what they like, but when people start setting a standard of what people should be, as if they're fucking entitled to, um, to tell somebody how they should look and what they should actually be because everybody is a fucking um, delicacy for them to, to taste, then we get a fucking problem. But, you know, then we start moralizing that they're only like this because bad, like, Western shit and all this other good shit, they have too much freedom, they're not in the fucking kitchen making me a sandwich. And this is the shit that kind of pisses me off. So let's hear what Coach Greg Adams has to say. A fucking fail assistant, co uh, assistant NBA coach. You've been on your dating apps, you get success, you're banging women, a lot of 49ers. A lot of guys will tell you that they're banging a lot of women, but I don't mess with fat women, no. I'm like 60% of the world, uh, the United States is fat women. Like your numbers statistically probably included some of them. Just a guess. Cause the, you ain't banging the hot ones, they already married. Half of them are married, half of them are bipolar, all right? 25% of women are on head meds. Did I talk about that in my iceberg theory? Okay. So you only got like 25% of the good ones, right? The skinny ones. Oh God, this is about hypergamy. Oh God. Okay. Okay. <sighs> Shit. What the fuck did I get into? I thought he was going to start fat shaming people. Fuck. Okay. 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 Ooh. Okay. Let's, let's go. So whatever it is. Got it. Okay? But you get tired of that. You're like, I can't take another big single mom. I wasted a lot of time. What do I do? Well, there's a whole bunch of life out here to live. There's a whole bunch of value to build. Wait, did he just throw single mothers under the bus? Like, oh shit. Oh, okay. Okay. Oh. Fuck, this is hypergamy bullshit. Okay. 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 And I'm sorry, like, dating apps, some people actually find long-lasting, committed relationships off of dating apps. But what, what kind of kills me is the fact that these motherfuckers actually believe that, like, they're contributing to the whole... Women are just whores because they're, they're trying to go through and sleep with these so many women. Like, this shit is fucking unbelievable. Okay, let's go, let's go. There's a whole bunch of authority. There's a whole bunch of you can learn about men. I was a guy that I was like, the church ain't nothing out here. My mom used to tell me to go to church. All I saw was a lot of rejects in there and them trying to pair them up with good men in the church. I was like, damn. They go on the singles retreat. They take all the single moms. Then they bring all the good men in there trying to do right by the Lord. <laughs> and then guess what? Oh, y'all pair up. Y'all be good. All right, I saw that too much. I was like, I'm done with church. Only to figure out that what was missing was a good church. Okay? I was like, dang. Wait, wait. Okay, okay. So, I get it. There are, you know, churches that actually try to, um, well, 
basically try to keep everybody in the faith and shit like that, where they try to pair up people in the church and like, I don't, wow, that sounds cultish already, like, arranged marriage by your church, like, that, that shit sounds cultish. But, okay, I got a question. I have a question. Like, do they think that, like, okay, okay, okay. There's so much shit on single mothers and shit like that. But I don't see them harping on the fact that some of these guys may already have children and shit like that. I mean, like, that one that says something if you haven't had a, a fucking accident with a woman that you quote unquote sleeping with on a regular basis, like either you not sleeping with them or maybe dog, you may have a problem. Or, or they already know that you ain't shit to have your kid. I, I'm just saying, I'm just saying. Shit, I actively go through the steps of trying to make sure I play safe when I play. But that is not... I don't know how to say this right. That has not... It's been active, but I, trust me, I've had women that I've played with that... um. They may not want protection, but I, I fucking always play safe. Anyway, let's go. Damn. We actually, that's what we needed, all right? Now, you can take the spirituality out of it, okay? Take the religion out of it if you want. But where a lot of this indoctrination has also come, not only from the public school indoctrination camp, but from church, they're leading men right into the wolves, right? Wait, so he has no problem with taking the spirituality out of it as long as you can keep the authoritarianness of religion, the authoritarianism of religion. He has no problem with taking the, the oh, you can think what you want about spirituality. But when it comes to being an authoritarian motherfucking organization, oh, no, we get to keep that. Like, we, we have to keep that shit because we have to keep that shit. Like, what the fuck now? Uh, let's continue. So you get tired of it. What else can I do with this life? A lot. Men, there is a lot to do all by yourself. <laughs> play with your dick, play video games, get on YouTube. Fuck. Did I just explain my life? Anyway, um, let's go. People watching you do it. All right. That's the benefits about social media. I'm going to do your game. I'm gonna make you watch me live this life. And what are women gonna do? They gonna watch you and say, damn, I wanna do that too. Now all it takes, cause we're talking about low quality, all it takes is two or three women to see some value in you. But unfortunately men want validation from 100% of the women out here. Every time you walk by a woman, oh, she didn't even look at me, your self esteem goes down. Dude, that's people. Oh God. That's people. Greg, Greg Adams, dog. That's people, dog. But you're actually trying to... Pro you're promoting this with this bullshit that you're trying to fucking do. Because you're also promoting... Y'all, you're a high-value male. Like, these are the motherfuckers that complain about... Their parents actually getting kids participation trophies. But... Literally watching videos like this saying you're special, you're awesome, you're we love you type bullshit is literally the adult version of a participation trophy. It doesn't mean shit, and the only validation that you get is from being part of the group. But let's continue. Oh, she didn't even give me choosing signals, your self esteem goes down. Because all your value is in what she thinks about you. And I'm telling you, that is not a good strategy for your life, okay? The third thing. Well, that is good. Like, I will admit that. Having sh having your value depicted by who, how many people want to sleep with you, that's that's not a good choice. Um, But he's not 
fucking dwelling on that. He's just saying like, just because a woman doesn't sleep with you doesn't mean that like you should tie that to your value. And also, just because people don't like you, you also don't tie you. Like, if you're doing some shit things, like hurting people, be it emotionally or physically, yeah, you're a shit person, but like, it really shouldn't bother you about what people think about you. If you're just totally fucking, nobody toxic to be around, and and, and just like, just abusive, or um, in a sense where you just use people, no, fuck, of course. Like, yeah, you may need to adjust your fucking self, but if nobody just, because people just don't like you, random for no fucking reason, no real fucking reason, then it, you shouldn't tie your value to that. But let's go. That lets you know if you're going to be ready for this is when you're ready to see your value truly, truly increase. I'm having a talk with Coach Greg Adams. Welcome to the show. Thank you very much. Without further ado. Wait, he didn't mention, he just mentioned one thing about fat women. Wait, I, wait, wait. I, I, I want a fucking refund of my motherfucking time. He mentioned one thing about fat women. I want a refund of my motherfucking time. I want a refund. I want a refund. I want a refund. He mentioned one thing about fat women. I want a refund. Fuck. Okay. 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 Wow. Wow. Let's let's. I had a second video about him, but let's let's actually do that. Let's 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 do that. Maybe we can hear some more of his shit. What's going on, everybody? It is Coach Greg Adams back in here with another video. Shout out to the Coach Gang for being in here, being involved, and being active on this YouTube channel. Check out the Free Agent Lifestyle book and the Devolution book. The links are in the description box below. Let's get right into it and talk about, and I made a video, and I'm, I'm going to cut myself off right quick. And I made a video probably about a year ago, and I think every year I probably come have on, to remake on. this video because there's a lot of new subscribers that come in here, and they're wondering how Coach got to the position that he's in, all right? How do I know so much about female nature? Why did I make this choice to go on a MGTOW journey and swallow the red pill? And I believe... Oh, you did swallow something, motherfucker. You did swallow something. Bullshit. Other men see me. Uh, wow. Okay, let's go. That I always tell the audience to give you this information because a lot of times people assume that I just started off this way. All right. But if you know a little bit about me and you've been watching the content here, you know that is simply not the case. All right. I didn't start off as a red pill man. I didn't start off going my own way and living the free agent lifestyle. Now, let me take you back. Obviously, I'm not going to take you back to the high school days. I had my fun. All right. <laughs> like they say, I had my fun. Now I'm looking for something serious. All right. But the high school days were what they were. They were, you know, women and you're just learning. You really lost at that particular point. Unless you're, you know, the top 1% and you can duck a basketball, you can run a ball across the goal line, which I did, but not very proficiently. All right. What happens is those who can do those who can't coach, right? <laughs> Wait, fuck. Like I had some top tier chicks in fucking high school. Like, I guess they were top tier to me because I like, Hey cat, it's you. Yay. I, I fucking love when cat gets on the stream anyway, but I had some top tier women in high school to me because like, were they the skinny top cheerleaders? No, because I, I like them thick. Um, but like, wow. Okay. Okay. Like, but it's also about personality. Dude, like if you are an asshole, if you're an asshole, no matter how good or shit did you like, fuck, like you have to have a personality in order to get people, be it men, women, whatever. You had to have a personality. And dude, like, I, I, okay, okay. Like, wow. Maybe because I went to the, the weird, like, high school where you had, like, the smart people, ish, smart ish people in a two, um, like, right at 2000, like, 99, 96 to 2000. But I didn't have that fucking. 
Yeah, let, let's go. Is you're basically trying to fill yourself out. Even those men are trying to fill themselves out. Even if they're getting a lot of peace leaving the high school days, they really don't really know who they are at that point. Okay, but let's take Wait. it back. And all right. What happens is you're basically trying to fill yourself out. Even those men are trying to fill themselves out. Even if they're getting a lot of peace leaving the high school days, they really don't really know who they are at that point. Okay. But let's take it back into like the. Did he just call it peace leave? Hold on. I'm sorry. Right. What happens is you're basically trying to fill. You focus on your purpose, and then you. I'm sorry. Where most of you guys are probably on everybody else for. All right. So ultimately. Oh shit. Okay. Short term journey. All right. I didn't ever believe that I would have kids or be married. Fuck. Right. I, I fuck fuck I fucked it up I fucked it up alright let's go right here let's but see but the high school days were what they were they were you know women and you're just learning you really lost at that particular point unless you're you know the top 1% right, and cool. you can duck a basketball you can run a ball across the goal line which I did but not very proficiently all right, what happens is you're basically trying to fill yourself out. Even yeah. those men are trying to fill themselves out. Come Even on. if they're getting a lot of peace leave in the high school days. This motherfucker called it peace leave. Wow. Fuck. Okay. It, it's. Wow. So, I know what the title of this video is. Coach Greg Adams is upset that he didn't get a lot of peace leave in high school. They really don't really know who they are at that point, okay? But let's take it back into like the ages of 18 and 25. I was certainly on what they would consider a bachelor's journey, all right? I didn't ever believe that I would have kids or be married, and it just wasn't part of my life. If you know anything about my professional life, I became a high school basketball coach at around age 19. And then I probably uh, by the age of 22, I became a college head coach at the division one level. So my career was actually going. Oh, 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 oh. Notice he just said assistant. Assistant popped up. I became a high school basketball coach at around age 19. And then I probably uh, by the age of 22, I became a college head coach at the division one level. So my. Not head coach. Assistant motherfucker. Oh, oh, does that motherfucker have, he has a classic NES in the background. Oh, shit. Or is that the mini? Yeah, that's the mini. Fuck, that's the mini. Okay, I'm sorry. He has a mini. Okay, let's go. Let's go. Career was actually going pretty aggressively. And I knew in that, prof in that profession, I was going to have to move across country and take jobs where I can get them. So I certainly didn't have any plans of getting married. Now, once I hit the age of 25, I started moving up the ranks pretty fast, all right? I was aggressive, I was a, a learner, I, I wanted to stay, spend all night at the office editing films. Uh, I was taking down plays and, and trying to build up my philosophy in coaching because my ultimate goal then was to become a division one uh, head basketball coach, all right? So by the age of 25, I was a top assistant at uh, San Jose State at the time. And what I wanted to do was um, you know, move up the ranks. And a lot of people talk to me about that professionally, especially on the women's side. Come on, that, get to the point. Uh, marriage will probably be something that would benefit me in my career. All right. So ultimately I stopped seeking out women for short term uh non-monogamous relationships and then eventually thought that having a wife and kids and a family would help me professionally. Now it wasn't way. Oh wow. Wow. Did he get a beard? Like, did he get a beard? And no, I don't mean like the red pill bullshit. Like, wow. He got married and had kids to move up professionally. I, okay. Okay. Fuck. Okay. Wow. Shit. I just thought you get married because you wanted to be with the person that you're with, not because you wanted to get the better job. <sighs> Let's go. It wasn't the only decision. I'm not going to put the blame on everybody else for pushing me towards that. Although it did help me out professionally on that. I will agree with that. But I made the decision to transition into what they would call the rite of passages into adulthood. And I decided that for my professional career, my personal life, being in the family and having a family would probably be best. And I certainly pursued that and I went into it and I got married. All right. So. 
this is where most of you guys have probably came into my life knowing that I was married and had to, uh, two kids at that particular point. And then the marriage just hit the skids. All right. A lot of things were occurring that I did not understand. And it confirmed why I didn't want to get married in the first place. But I took full responsibility of the situation and I washed my hands of the, the marriage. All right. And I went my own way away from the marriage. Now, what happened at that particular point? Wow. And most people who. That's an interesting way of calling divorce. Like that. That's a fucking interesting way of, of naming divorce. But let's continue. You know, they come to my channel and they want to disagree with a lot of things that I talk about. And they want to use the shaming language, bitter and hurt. A lot of people believe that this was the thing that made me bitter. All right. That turned me into the red pill monster that I am today. Now, that could be. Is he admitting that he's a red pill monster? Fuck. Okay. 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 Yeah, I, I know. I, fuck, I, I like people that like, like I'm it. I'm it. I, I when I got married, maybe for the wrong reasons. I, I just like wanted to be around my ex spouse, and I just enjoyed their company. I, you know, me and her had like you know affection for each other. Um, but like I never thought about like it as a rite of passage. Like no, just like. This is a thing that you do. But like to make it as your your lot in life that you're gonna get to the next level because reasons like that doesn't like wow. <laughs> yeah, red pill monster is a little redundant. But l let's go. You know further from the truth. It certainly gave me plenty of ammunition to talk about. And when you're involved in a almost nine year marriage with two children and you go through the divorce courts and the laws and family court, sure, that created a lot of frustration. It created a lot of loss of income, but it certainly wasn't the thing that made me bitter. All right. It all right. So I I will actually attest to that. The fucking divorce and family court is shit in this country. And like, you know, I have my issues with it, but a lot of it comes, and I hate to sound like a feminist here, a lot of it comes from a system of misogyny where they think that, oh, women should be the primary caretakers of children and shit like that. And, like, you actually see, like, it, it didn't start off this way. And the fact is, you know, as as responsible men maybe we should take a more active role in you know child rearing like it's a stigma that adult men can't be you know teachers to younger kids because it's a stigma because it's this whole belief that only women can take care of ki small kids. And if a man does, well, then there's something fucking wrong with it. Like, but that goes to misogyny and shit like that. Like, it literally is based on the whole, no, women should be taking care of small children. But, like, it, that has caused a lot of problems in our society. But, you know... Yeah, sure. Like, yeah, of course, the courts are in fact because of reasons. But let's continue. Gave me plenty of ammunition to talk about. Um, it was a great thing for me to lead this marriage. And as a matter of fact, I'm going to talk about what that next transition was. This next transition got me back into the culture that we have existing today. Now, I want to preface that before I got married, I want you guys to understand there was no uh, text messaging. All right. When I got married. All right. That <laughs> happened during my marriage. That actually is something that came about during my marriage. So uh, the idea that you can text people and have multiple people on the hook. All right. There was a there was none of that going on. If you needed to go out and step out and have an affair, even on the male or the female side, you actually had to put in some work. There was also no social media there was no facebook before i got married there was no instagram and there was a uh, online dating but the, the stigma with online dating at that point like you had to be a complete loser to be on an online dating site so that's just to give you an indication of where society was prior to my marriage and what it evolved into as i got into my separation and then impending divorce then once the divorce was actually in process, I was getting into now Instagram was available. Now text messaging and, and, and uh, dating apps, Tinder. I, I don't even think Tinder was around yet. I believe plenty of fish was around at that particular point. <laughs> okay, some of these fucking dating apps that he has that he's talking about are just fucking trash. They're just trash. Unless you pay for like the 
forty dollars a month thing, they're just trash. Like they're basically Skinner boxes where you stay on. They try to get you to stay on long enough in order to be like, "Hey, let me show you this ad." But I'm either here or they're there. I, I'm not gonna be able to tolerate this long. So let's go. And this was a whole new world. It was the wild, wild west. All right. Everything that could be offered to me was offered to me on a platter. And at, at that point, I probably was age 36. Um, and I'm coming into a situation where I was in missionary marital position. And now monkey double back lips are being offered. All right. Just out of nowhere. All right. This was uh, extremely different from what it was before I got married. All right. There was none of this going okay, on. Okay. No, I can't take much more of this. Um, yeah. Like. So, long story short, TLDR, um, he got married to, I guess, get a better career. That Maybe he isn't the monogamous type. You know, there are some of us that are out here that aren't the monogamous type. Like, I, I just like, yeah, fuck. And like Kat is saying, it's like tech um, technology makes cheating different um, easier. It's kind of sounds like dude is saying that um, he chooses people because they have no other option, or people choosing for no other option. I'm sorry, like as much as I um want peace, leave the fuck. Okay, I'm sorry. Okay, I'm serious. Um, as much as I want peace leave, but I don't want to actually be somebody's choice uh, choice of last resort. I'm sorry. I, I, I just can't I fucking actually comprehend that shit. It, it's just too much for me. But anyway, guys. Anyway, guys. Um, if you want to find new euphemisms for sex, um, please <laughs> like, share, and subscribe to the channel. Um, if you haven't done so, hit that notification bell and, um, yeah, yeah, th thank you for watching. Ooh, I can't believe this motherfucker said peace leave.